Hi, my name is Dr. Carlos Altamirano. I'm a bariatric surgeon working in Tijuana, Mexico, and I'm making this video for all my patients and for all the people that need to understand obesity. I call it understanding obesity. Okay, we want to talk about how this happened, and uh, I'm going to explain to you why I call it a disease. Calling obesity a disease is difficult because that means your insurance needs to cover for it. And they prefer to call it a precondition, something you do you, you did to yourself. I'm gonna start with something I tell to all my patients. It is your fault to be an overweight. Everybody tells you that you know it, you blame yourself because you are overweight or obese. But the the thing is, I'm not blaming you. I'm telling you this because you need to understand that you have control over it. You can control it. You can do something about it. So, of course, it is your fault to be overweight. But what you don't know, and this is a first, I'm pretty sure this is the first time you have heard this, and at least from a doctor. <laughs> it's not your fault not being able to lose weight. Huh. Are you surprised? I'm pretty sure. Well, all doctors will tell the patient that it's your, it's your fault to be number one because you are not eating well, because you are not doing enough exercise. And maybe that's true, maybe. But even for patients, that's not true for patients that are doing restrictive diets and crazy amounts of exercise, and they can't lose weight. I'm going to tell you why it's not your fault not being able to lose weight. It's because you're fighting your metabolism. This is how it works. Our body doesn't have sensors for weight. Your body doesn't know what's your healthy weight, but you have sensors for fat. For the amount of fat in your body, it's in the brain. It's like a thermostat. We call it a set point. We had the set, a set point for amount of fat. And the signal to tell the brain how much fat you have is called leptin. That's a hormone and it's produced by your adipocytes, your fat cells. So, if your set point is this, you need this amount of leptin, so you're in a healthy balance, sort of, okay? The problem is that you reprogram that set point to a higher point. So your brain thinks that you should have this amount of fat instead of this one, okay? So, you have, this is your set point, and that's where your brain is going to defend like a healthy amount of fat. So, you need this amount of leptin to be even with your brain. So, you're overweight. The problem is, that, that, that's not the whole problem. Okay, you will probably your set point, that's a pretty big problem. But, your brain is also resistant to leptin. So, you need this amount of leptin to make your brain think that you have this amount of fat. It's something like diabetes. A patient with diabetes in the first stage is producing a lot of insulin, but it's insulin resistant. So the pancreas is producing tons of insulin, but your body is not able to tell that you have it and it's not using it until the pancreas just crash. Something like that. You have a leptin resistance. That means your brain is not using it properly, it's not detecting it. So you need more than that to make your brain think you have a healthy amount of fat. Well, what happens when your brain doesn't detect enough fat? It's going to lower your base metabolism, so you're going to feel tired all the time. You're going to feel like doing nothing without energy. You're going to be sleeping, sleepy all the time and unable to concentrate, to focus on your work. Mm -hmm. that, I think you, you understand what I mean. And uh, that's not the whole problem, but your brain is going to make you feel hunger. How it's going to do that? It's going to increase ghrelin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. So you're going to have a lot of ghrelin and you're going to starve. You know, you're going to feel like starving all the time. And uh, it's going to decrease satiety hormones like CCK, PYY, and amylin. Those are satiety hormones, make you feel satisfied after eating. Well, those are really low, so it's going to be difficult for you to, to feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I do this every day. I have around, well, a lot of patients every month. I'm doing this for them. I, I'm pretty sure they, they're going to comment in, in this video. I hope so. The thing is, 
that I see this every day, so I need to learn, I need to study. I've done courses, online courses, I, I read a lot of things. I read about hormones, I read about physiology. I'm a surgeon, bariatric surgeon, general surgeon. And uh, what I'm telling you, it's a compilation of a lot of knowledge and studies. Not my own, but I learn from the best, okay? And uh, I'm gonna talk about some experiments, uh, mainly from Dr. Seeley, Dr. Cummings, Dr. Ruffini, and Dr. Kaplan. Mm -hmm. And there was this experiment, for example, they were doing uh, restricted diet and exercise in thousands of patients. They lost an average of 60 pounds in one year. And I think that's great. The problem is, at the end of the year, they had their hormones all messed up. A lot of growing, they were starving, satiety hormones really low, difficult to feel satisfied after eating. But that's not the whole problem. They were feeling miserable, of course, because they were starving all the time. But on the second year, they regained 60% of that weight again. But the brain is not happy with 60%, so it keeps pushing to regain the other 40%. How do we know this? Because at the end of the second year, the hormones were still messed up. So the brain is still pushing to regain the 40%. Okay? Like a rebound. Uh, you know, okay? Well, I'm not telling that bariatric surgery is the only treatment for overweight, but definitely is the most effective. It's a metabolic surgery. I'm going to explain how it works in a second video called um, Fighting Obesity. This is understanding obesity. So you need to understand that it's not your fault not being able to lose weight. Because restricted diet and exercise make your brain thinks that you're sick, starving, or stressed. Because you have your step on here. You lose some fat doing diet and exercise. And your brain thinks that you're either sick, stressed, or starving. So your brain is like, what's happening? And enters to an energy saving mode lowering your base metabolism, increasing ghrelin, hunger hormone, decreasing satiety hormone, CCK, PROI, amylin, and doing a lot of stuff to make you regain weight. It's, that's why it's so difficult to lose weight. You can't tell a diabetic patient to produce more insulin or to be more sensitive to insulin because that's a physiological thing. The same way you can't tell a patient it's only your fault not being able to lose weight. Because even if you take pills, do crazy amounts of exercise, you restrictive diet, you are not gonna be able to lose it, or at least not be able to keep it away. You're gonna regain your weight. Okay? So the problem is what okay, we're calling it a disease, what kind of disease? It's an energy balance disruption. It's a leptin resistance. And you need to fight that resistance. How are you gonna do that? How can you we program your step point to a lower point? Well, with metabolic surgery. See you in the next video. I hope you have a more clear vision about overweight and obesity. And don't judge people, don't judge patients. If you're a doctor, please, you need to change the way you're seeing obesity. Or you are not going to be able to fight it. Um, again, I'm telling you that uh, bariatric surgery is the only treatment. It's the most effective for, for some patients. It's a life-changing, a life-saving surgery. I have patients that were in a wheelchair and they're walking again by themselves. And patients that need a knee replacement, hip replacement, but they are overweight and, you know, it's going to be a failed surgery. Um, back problems, diabetes, high blood pressure, thyroid problems, depression. Yeah. That sort of thing. And with this surgery, we're changing the physiology and we're changing how the body works. You're going to be able to keep the weight away. But I would like to finish this video with something really important that I tell to all my patients. Bariatric surgery is a tool. It's not magic. So you need to use this momentum and this motivation to keep the, the weight away. So you need a lifestyle change. You need to have a healthy diet and you need to do exercise okay 
So, see you in the next video where um, I'm going to explain bariatric surgery, okay, the options and how they work. I, have, I hope in the near future I'm going to be able to put some, I don't know, pictures or something so you're going to be able to understand it better, okay? There's a lot of information out there, but I'm going to explain uh, each surgery to you. It's very complex, okay? See you.